Hi, I'm Christina. And I'm Randy. Are you ready for an adventure? Come see our journey. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Today's adventure takes us from Los Angeles out to Mojave. In Mojave, we visit the air and spaceport and have lunch there. And then we go over to Edwards Air Force Base entrance on the north side where there's a B-52 sitting out in the desert. B-52 is outside of Edwards Air Force Base entrance. The Mojave Air and Spaceport is located in the Antelope Valley and the wind on this day is blowing extremely hard. Mojave Air and Spaceport. Imagination flies here at MojaveAirport.com. The Convair CV-990 sitting here is NASA's Landing Systems Research Aircraft. This jet was used by NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center. In 1993 and 1994, flight tests for landing gear and braking systems for the space shuttle were performed. Tests were conducted using this jet at Edwards Air Force Base and the Kennedy Space Center. That's kind of cool. This is an F-4 Phantom II. F-4 Phantom could reach speeds of Mach 2.2, creating sonic booms over the Mojave Desert. Upon retirement in 1996, 316 F-4 aircraft were converted to drones at the Mojave Airport. Its main purpose when built in 1964 was for use in Vietnam. A nice blustery day. Next, we've got a supersonic jet trainer used to train future test pilots from around the world here in Mojave from 1994 to 2000 at the National Test Pilot School. Check that out. Star Trek Lobo logo for the Mojave Air and Space Trans uh, Port. I want to say Spaceport. That's exactly what it is. Air and Spaceport. It's actually the first licensed facility by the United States for horizontal launches of reusable spacecraft. But right now we're here for the Voyager restaurant. Voyager restaurant is rated with four stars by Yelp and mainly for having a great breakfast uh, served until 11 a.m. but here, we're here for lunch. Hello. That's the, looks like a speaker like maybe they announce when somebody's taking off. You can hear it, yeah. Oh, I see like an experimental plane out there. You see it? It says it's Plain Crazy Saturdays. This is, we're at the Voyeur restaurant. Oh, that guy's motor is like on. Yeah, he's the one that's warming up. Oh, there he goes. Look at, there he goes. He's cleared for takeoff. And... We'll figure out what you want. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm going into the plane. You can sit and watch the planes take off and land while you're eating. And it's mainly a restaurant where people fly in, have lunch or breakfast and fly back out again. I'm going to have the $100 burger, but it's only $12. Before I finish it all, I had chicken strips. Fries are good. You got the $100 burger. Looks nice. And it's very tasty, he said. 
Yep. Thumbs up. There you go. I love these. I love these. I love these drawings. <laughs> these are great. Right inside the door of the restaurant, they have these wonderful drawings, and a lot of them are really fun to look at. Interesting to watch airplanes while you're having lunch. The facility covers 2,998 acres and has three runways. It's also known for the National Test Pilot School and Virgin Galactic Spaceship Company. The Mojave Airport is also known for being a storage location for commercial airlines due to having a vast area and a dry environment. During the pandemic, almost three quarters of the airlines stored their planes in this area. The third Saturday of the month, they have a fly-in and people meet up, fly in with their airplanes and have some breakfast or lunch at the restaurant. The Mojave Airport is also known to have some planes that have reached the end of their useful lifetime and are scrapped in the boneyard while others are refurbished and returned to service. BAE Systems, Mojave Operations. Look at this, a rotary rocket. Check it out. They got a camera up there on the top. Say hello. This is, this is experimental. See that? It has got a bear on it. Oh, I love it even more. But there's a sign, which is really kind of nice. It has a little garden area, table, some grass area. That's very cool. The rotary rocket Rotan ATV, the first rocket powered vehicle to fly at the Mojave Spaceport in 1999. The founders of the rotary rocket company were among the first to recognize the end of the Cold War, resulting in a huge shift away from militarization. The really unique thing about the rotary ATV was it took off like a rocket and returned more like a helicopter. Oh, look at that. There's a little joystick inside. It's very cool, especially right behind the sun. It just makes it look very cool. <laughs> what? It's a Spaceship One replica? First private manned space program flown to space from Mojave Spaceport. That's right here where we're at in 2004. Holy moly. Take a look at this. Look at that. M&M's. That's very cool. Look at that. And it even says it on the side. It says right there. See it? Spaceship One. Wow. Virgin Atlantic. Oh, you know what? I know you probably can't see it, but the tail is signed. I'm going to see if I can get a better shot on the other side. Check it out. Virgin Galactic. Right on the tail. See, it says Brick Price, Karen Cardi, I think it says. And it says, all around the, yeah, all around the, all around the yeah, the burner. This whole area is de dedicated to space, and most people don't even know that this little garden is here. It's very nice. A lot of people don't realize that planes have a graveyard or a boneyard. This is a small one, as there is a larger one in Kingman, Arizona and one that is a huge one that's dedicated to military aircraft in Tucson, Arizona. Recalled into service, possibly. Oh, I see Qantas. Oh, look, there's a, that guy's taken off that we saw at the airport. Well, that means he's gonna be taken off soon. 
Where? 747's out there. <laughs> wow. That's quite a few dead airplanes. Yeah, look at, check out that. Stargazer, Northrop Grumman. It's the aircraft field operations. And right behind there is the National Test Pilot School. Check out all those dead airplanes out there. Too many. We're checking out Virgin Galactic. And there it is, B-79. We pulled in and headed towards one of the Virgin Galactic hangars and right away the security came out. So we headed away. And, and we're turning around. <laughs> and we're leaving. <laughs> Edwards Air Force Base is the home of the Air Force Test Center, Test Pilot School, and NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center. Chuck Yeager's flight that broke the sound barrier happened right here at Edwards Air Force Base. Just outside of the north gate sits a NB-52B Strato Fortress. This one was flown by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration until December of 2004. It flew a total of 159 captive carry and launch missions in the support of the X-15 program and the HL-10 and the hypersonic X-43. The tail section on this aircraft was modified to tow the aircraft for launching into space. Flight Research Center. Oh, cool. Look at that. I wonder. Well, we got as close as we could, looked up in the inside and checked out the entire thing even though the wind was blowing us to death but we had a good time checking out this aircraft F-16 target test that is so cool oh that is so cool look at all that that's all folks you see that on the end of that? So, that, that, that's all, folks. So here's, yeah. How cool. On the underside of this big B-50. Restricted. No photography or video photography. If you enjoyed this vlog, please subscribe. And ring that notification bell. And give us a like. It lets us know you care. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. The, 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 that's all, folks.